All right, on the Nesson MMA podcast now, we're joined by Devin Powell, UFC lightweight and owner of Nostos MMA Gym. Um, also a New England native, Devin, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? Good, good. First of all, Happy New Year. How are the holidays and the New Year and everything? How's your eye? You fought last month at UFC Argentina in November. Sorry, November 17th. And you had a you suffered an eye injury uh, during that fight, a hematoma. How has your eye recovered since then? Uh, actually, you know, ironically enough, and thankfully enough, um, it was probably the, uh, the scariest injury that that affected me the most ever in a fight in my life. Um, but it was the the least long term injury I've ever had. Uh, basically, by the time I was leaving the hospital, I started to see blurry out of it. But my thought when I was inside the cage was that, um, was that was that there's a possibility that I was blind in my eye for the rest of my life. And then in Argentina, I was going away in an ambulance where people didn't speak English, and I was trying to figure out if I was able to see again or all this stuff. And it really it really wasn't until like hours later that I started to realize that it was something that um, that it, it was basically blood trapped inside my eyeball, and it, it just drains on its own. It's just um, just called a high tema. It's just a terrible um, inconvenience, and uh, in in the fight game, it's really uh, really tough to be dealing with that kind of injury. Um, but you know, there's other things that have happened to me in fights where I've um, um, I've been uh, you know I've busted my feet and I've broken my eye socket. I've uh, wow. you know all, all sorts of other little things where. Um, you know, I, when I get signed to a day on the Dana White show, I snap my nose in half. Yeah. Uh, but all those things lasted way longer. Um, but they affected me a lot less inside the fight. Even the broken nose, you know, you don't quite feel everything the same way. But when your your vision is cut in half, and then you put that, uh, you know, along with that, the fact that I was fighting a lefty and my right eye was shut, it just made it a lot more inconvenient. Yeah, that. That fight, again, UFC Argentina back in November against Jesus Panetta, uh, Panetto, he, uh, unanimous decision lost. Now, in that fight, I was watching it again today. You spent a lot of time on your back. You're trying to engage him to the, to the mat, and he showed a lot of respect to you, uh, for your ground game. Were you trying, was, was the injury the reason why you were trying to get to the mat on, on your back the, uh, the whole time? Did that kind of change your strategy after you got injured during the fight with your eye? No, you know, honestly, it was uh, it was just more a matter of um, getting kicked, caught, and ending up on my back. And he he was trying to play that range where, like, if I stood up, I could get kicked in the face, um, you know. And uh, that's like how Eric Anders had that big knockout recently. The guy was just popping up in Argentina. One hand on the mat is not a sound fighter, so I could be on my feet in one hand and still get kicked in the face. Um, and he wasn't getting close enough to get on the ground with me. He just kind of was trying to just kill kill time. He was running right. the whole fight and trying to kill time. And that's just, unfortunately, that's how it played out. Um, I was always chasing when I was on my feet, and I was just basically waiting for the ref to either stand us up or for him to get in my guard or or back off so we could keep fighting. Uh, it was definitely a very frustrating um, fight in general. You know, I, I thought I won the first round for sure, um, and then – the, you know, the rest of the fight, honestly, I, I've only watched the first round a couple times because my sister posted it. Um, I know that was my strongest round. In the middle of the second round, I get caught in the eye, um, I think with a with a toenail or so, and that's what caused the, the high tema. So from there on out, I was just kind of um, on autopilot, you know, it sucks, but uh, it is what it is. I definitely wasn't looking to be staying on my back, but I definitely would have been trying to submit them off my back if you wanted to. Engaged. Yeah. So you said you said the injury happened in the second round. Yeah, correct. Yeah. No, is it a you said you called it a high hema, and I've heard hematoma. I guess I'm not an ophthalmologist or an eye doctor, so is there a difference between the two? Do the doctors tell you, or I I think that a high hema is like a hematoma, but it's directly inside your eyeball. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now you watched UFC 232 um, this past Saturday, and uh, Captain Gano had a very gruesome injury with uh, another eye injury, detached, um, uh, detached eyelid. Now, what, what, what's going through your head when you saw that? 
you know, my heart was out for her. You know, it's uh, um, I when I get when I get hit, I I felt a sharp pain, um, and I I my vision was was like pretty much instantaneous that it, it shut off and everything wow. just turned yellow, like dark yellow. Um, but you know, I I don't. I would never say somebody's not tough, and I'm not saying that I'm any tougher than anyone else. But for whatever reason, when it happened to me, I kind of just bit down and kept going. For her, hers was so, such severe pain, or it, maybe it scared her so much that she turned away um, from fear that she was, you know, uh, she, I think she had said that she thought that maybe she had ruptured her eye, um, which would have been horrible. But, yeah, you know, it, my heart went out for her because it's, she wasn't able to continue on, unfortunately, but it's uh, it's a scary thing when you hurt your eyes. Um, thankfully, she's all right, I think, um, and thankfully, I'm all right, too. Yeah. But there's guys like Jackson or, or like uh, John Winklejohn that get caught with a toe holding pads, and he's never going to see again in that eye. So. Yeah, that's, um, it's absolutely very scary. Have you reached out to anyone who had a similar injury um, to ask for, you know, I guess dealing with that or uh no you know honestly uh I I was seen um multiple times now by uh eye doctors to make sure everything's 100% all right no detached retinas um no uh no no signs that I uh that I'm not okay to to go back to to combat um but right after I fought I'm sitting inside the hospital uh with Joe Lozon who cornered me yeah and, uh, and I mean, he fought almost 30 times in the octagon. And I just asked him, I said, hey, uh, has this ever happened to you? Or have you ever seen this happen? And he said no. So it's, it's definitely not a, a common thing. I feel like I would have heard about it more. It was just a, a really lousy situation that happened in my last fight where thankfully not more people are suffering. I mean, biggest thing, I I would say that it's fortunate for, the, for our sport that I haven't actually seen anyone losing an eye cause you saw Chad yeah. get caught with that toe nail. Imagine one that just, you know, maybe from a, a big guy or something, a big heavyweight or something, just throwing that and getting rifled in the eyeball with that toe. It's just scary stuff that's definitely always possible. But, you know, I get a high C my cat, got a torn eyelid. Um, you know, it's uh, they're definitely not the worst case scenarios. They're just a pain, you know. Yeah, that's that's scary. And was there any confusion during the fight when it was happening? Is like you're fighting, you're in the octagon, big fight, and all of a sudden, boom, you can't see out of your right. Were you confused? Were you scared while you were fighting? What was the emotion going through that time? Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was definitely the scariest uh, moment I've I've had in the fight. Um, you know, at, n- at no point did I. Uh, um, at no point did I say like I'm I'm done, um, but I definitely went back. But after I got off that bench in that third, going to that third round, I kind of just came to terms with it. I I was just kind of to myself. I just thought, all right, I'm not going to be able to see his left hand. So you know, at the end of the day, this might be it. But I got off the bench. Let's you know, let's go do this. Um, and uh, you know, I went through and through the round. Oh, I'm proud that I did that. I just. Uh, no, I wish I could have seen the whole fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, um, now, you talk about going into that third round. Uh, the doctor was checking up on your eye. The referee was checking up on your eye. Was there any, like, uh, conversation about a doctor stoppage at that point? They just asked me if I was okay. They didn't uh, They didn't say, can I see? They didn't hold up fingers to, to ask me how many uh, they were holding up. They just, uh, they just looked at my eyeball. They said, are you okay? And I said, yes. Which, and then you I just mean, went right in there again. Exactly, well, I was, wasn't okay. And if they wanted to examine it, I mean, I, I'm no doctor, but I feel like if they wanted to be more thorough, then they would have had to stop the fight if they knew I couldn't see. Um, <laughs> but they didn't. They didn't do that. Now, uh, Devin, you have obviously this very tough, courageous performance, and this isn't the first uh, rare injury you've had in your fighting career. Uh, I guess not even this year. I guess in um, 2018, strange year for you in terms of injuries in March. Uh, tell me about this ruptured testicle uh, scenario. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I don't yeah, need to yeah. laugh. By the way, it's just, it's just. I'm sure it's very painful, and I, I'm sure everyone who hears about it laughs about it. But it's just, 
it's very strange, I guess. So take us through what happened and how you recovered. Yeah, so basically, um, as I said, Joe cornered me, and I was I was down at his gym training, and I was just rolling no gi jujitsu with him. I just wasn't wearing my diamond in my makeup, which is a huge mistake. Oh. Um, I, I honestly, until that injury, um, I I never wore it unless I was sparring, no matter what. I, I would just never work up for like 10 years. Right. And then I suffered pretty, pretty close to the worst injury you can have. Um, he was trying to pass my guard, and uh, he, uh, during his knee slide pass, um, his knee came up, and when he was trying to get around my guard, he just, basically sandwiched, sandwiched it and exploded it so the contents came from the inside oh to the God. outside. Um, I, I tried going because I knew how bad it was. I laid on the mat for like an hour and then I like had to hold myself up while I showered. And then I tried to go to a walk-in clinic real close just to, to see what, what the deal was. And they shooed me away because I didn't have a traditional insurance. I was trying to tell them that the UFC covers training injuries and they just didn't really care. So I went home. Um, I got... Wow a good amount of drinks in me just to, like, get the pain numbed up. Oh, like alcohol I, drinks. <laughs> yeah. And then I, um, I had posted online uh, just basically, like, hey, uh, not to be too gruesome, but I, I get hit pretty bad. Has anybody had any injuries like this? And I got a flood of messages all telling me I had to go get seen in case it was, like, torsion or a rupture, all this stuff. So a day and a half after the injury had occurred, I ended up going to a, a good doctor and they they did the um, the ultrasound and after they did that the doctor came in basically saying um, what have I asking what I had had to eat or drink that day so I knew that meant I was going in for surgery wow uh, they went in they uh, they put what they could back inside stitched it up which all the stitches inside forever now and then uh, glued the rest of it back together but yeah it was horrible you know I uh, I definitely um, put a plug out there my uh my uh friends at diamond mma they have the best cup comp, uh, company on the planet i would say for combat sports for youth and adult and uh it's huge mistake not to wear a cup it's, i just i hope some people learn from my mistake um and i hope some people go out there and get some cups you can use the code um devin with a capital d d e v i n 10 to get 10 percent off any order um and i i could not recommend wow. wearing yourself higher than I than I do now. So yeah. yeah, that definitely sounds like the tough way to learn, uh, the toughest way to learn, I guess. And that, what was the recovery process like? And how long did it take until you were like normally walking and clear for fight? So um, I got clearance um, to to start going back to like training, like yeah, and training a little after a month. Um, oh wow. And, uh, That's- yeah, but uh, it was definitely it, it's still a sensitive area, more so than it always already is for those that, <laughs> that know know the area. Um, I can you know you can physically feel the stitches in there; they're really like hard and weird, <laughs> and it, it, uh, it sucks. But you know, I'm thankful not to have completely lost it, which is a very common occurrence with this injury. Um, but yeah, so uh, I was back to it a little over a month after um i was in the hospital after the surgery for like i think i was in there for like close to a day or something like that um but you know at the end of the day it's uh, a blessing in disguise because the ufc is such a cutthroat organization where right you know you get paid to perform and uh you know i was i was uh riding a couple real tough decision losses you know most recent one before the injury was a, a really close split decision loss where I doubled my opponent's strike count, but that stuff really doesn't matter because it's just end of the day wins and losses. And um, this injury happened, I ended up getting interviews with TMZ, Barstool Sports, um, Jim Rome, <laughs> who loves me, um, all these these good things, uh, you know, press wise, and everybody seemed to like me and uh, they liked my optimism and everything. And shortly after, I got back to full-on training, I got offered a 30-day notice fight in Calgary, and I went in, and I won with a big liver kick, so that yeah. was the, you know, the biggest moment in my career, aside from getting kind of the UFC, and now I'm just back in a similar boat, you know, it's like coming off a fight where I, I get, I would say, a pretty severe injury as far as affecting your performance, um, and I just, you know, I, I hope 
I hope more than anything that I get another crack in there, you know, and uh, I've, uh, all I'm doing is training and getting better every time. It sucks that I had lost that decision, but I think even with only one eye for more than half of the fight, I think that, especially in the first round, I proved how much better I, I am as a fighter than I've ever yep. been. Um, training with those guys at, at Lozons and my team's just getting so much better back at home. You know, Calvin Cater, Rob Font. Um, yeah. Rod, uh, Rodriguez, you know, all, all those guys that are just killers and all the local guys that all go to Joe's to train. It's um, it's, a, it's a, a killer place, you know, and I've uh, I've really um, enjoyed being part of that and being a part of Skill and Strength where we do the strength and conditioning with Mike Perry. So, Yeah, one thing you can uh, absolutely say about the, our local area of fighters in New England is that the toughness is absolutely there. I mean, you, you look back at 2018, uh, with even Kyle Bokniak's fight against Zabit uh, Magomed Sharapov, the toughness he showed in that fight, and just the other fighters, um, it's, it's it's pretty remarkable. And with you though, like you've, you've battled through so much adversity with, in terms of like injuries and stuff. But now, you, you've lost three of your last four in the UFC. How does battling from like adversity from the, the injuries you faced relate to the adversity you're facing now in terms of in the losses you've had and trying to bounce back? Is is it kind of relate? Can you transfer some of that? Um, perseverance? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, I think that I uh, I have a tendency to bounce back well, you know, and it's just like, uh, I hate being like so woe with me, but for the entire fight camp, you, you know, guys like Joe Lozon had said directly, like he made a social media post saying that I don't, I don't imagine that I could ever go through a fight camp and fight going through as many you know, bad things that Devin went through this fight camp. But um, before my camp even started, my whole academy flooded and it destroyed our whole main training room. Wow. So not until a couple of weeks ago, we were back up and running. So I spent that entire camp without our training room. We had our basement and we had a little side room, um, but nothing like our, our big open area with all the wall pads and stuff. So, um, you know, our, our academy team morale was down. Everything, you know, everyone was bummed. Everybody was, you know. We lost a lot of students, and thankfully, you know, I, I, again, I, I'm training with Joe and stuff, so I, I was going there and to still strength, but I can't be there all the time. I run and, and manage a, a mixed martial arts academy. So right. to keep that going. I have to be there as much as possible, even though I'm giving up a ton of classes to prepare for my fight. I still have to be around a lot and um, deal with the, the good and the bad. Yeah, that academy, so, Los Dos MMA. Um, yeah. And how that, so what is that like? The balance of managing a business and also training to fight in the UFC. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I I couldn't ask for something better. You know, it's um, I try not to ever complain about it because there's a million people that that fight that have day jobs, even inside the UFC. Guys like Steve Miocic, the uh, the firefighter. You know, yeah. I uh, I train full time and I train people full time, so I have to make sure that I'm smart with my own training. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not spending eight hours every single day inside an office doing something I hate like I used to. used to be at a passport center, yeah. completely um, part of the walking dead, you know, just waiting to get out so that I could go <laughs> train or going and training on my, my lunch break and then going and sleeping in my car outside the academy and waiting to train again. Like, it's uh, it's a great life that I have. I'm, I'm super fortunate to, to run a, an MMA gym and to have such good coaches that help me out. So, again, we, you know, I just feel like everything is so good now. Um, I'm trying to get my health all back in order. You know, both my feet uh, were pretty messed up in that fight, um, but I get clearance now from my feet. I, it looks like like a small fracture in my foot, but my foot, I put a post out. It was just disgusting. It was so fat. Um, Wow. And I actually had, had hurt that foot um, about just under a month before the fight. So I, the whole month leading up to the fight, I didn't throw it once. I just told everyone and said, like, look, I'm not going to hit pads. I'm not going to spar with it. But once I get in that cage, I'm going to throw it with that intention. <laughs> and right away, I did. And it just busted right back to normal hmm. or back to terrible, actually. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it, uh, uh, kind of just rambling about all these negative things, but I think I think everything is really good right now, and um, you know things uh, things sometimes happen for reasons, sometimes don't. But I think that how good the academy is now. We have all new with the Homer Mass. 
Um, all new wall pads. It's the best we've ever looked. Our team is better than ever. It's two guys fighting for titles in February. Um, other guys fighting in two other leagues. We got Cage Titans, Combat Zone. Yeah. Um, we have a guy fighting for CS. Two guys fighting for titles in NES. Um, I just I feel like things are good right now. As long as I get my health completely in order, I feel like if yet again, I I, I believe I can perform inside that cage better than I ever have. Um, you know, and I, uh, I I feel like I have a lot of weight on my shoulders, and I'm ca- I'm happy to carry that weight, being the only guy from the state of Maine that um, that's competing inside the UFC. You know, and I'm also representing the state of New Hampshire because that's where my mixed martial arts gym. I just uh, that's where my gym is. I just live in Maine. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's uh, it's just uh, I just hope for the best. You know, that's all I can really do right now. I'm trying to. Uh, just train, get better, make my students better, um, take care of my family, and uh, I uh, yeah, just hope to fight again soon as long as I'm in good health. Yeah, have you got into any discussions with Dana's people about what's next, or is that still in the works? Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things that it's just such a tough business that sometimes the uh, my management, um, top game management, Tyson Chartier, who's yep. pretty much the best in the business. He he kind of just, he, he knows what we're doing. And sometimes the best thing is just to, to to work hard and, you know, not have to go out and tag those guys over and over and over and let them know, like, you know, like, that, hey, maybe maybe we should let this guy go. Or, yeah. you know, just let me, let me work. You know, when a, a fight pops up, I've always said yes. Even when I haven't, you know, been 100%, I've never said no to a fight. Every time a fight switched, I've said yes. I've always been 100% a yes man to, to the UFC. They ask, I say yes. Just tell them to send me a contract, and I do it. Um, I know I've, I've said this multiple times, but um, and Sean Shelby himself said that he thought it would be a good fight. I'd love to get the John Gunther fight. You know, he's coming off a loss. I'm coming off a loss. Um, I think it could be a battle of the two goofiest guys in the UFC. Um, and I just think that he comes straight forward, and, um, you know, I, I like to – do the same thing, and I think that at the end of the day, somebody's gonna get a finish, and it's gonna it's gonna be a real fight. The last guy I fought was riding a real long win streak, and he walked straight forward, and he uh, knocked everybody out that he fought. Um, and then all of a sudden, the first time I've ever seen him do it, he walked back the whole fight. And yeah. I asked him after his coaches because he didn't speak English, being from Latin America, and they said, "Yeah, the plan was to, to run away." So. Um, I wow. don't think I would see that with this guy. Um, but yeah, you know, I just, uh, I just want another fight and I, I just want to stay active and stay relevant. That was my first time in almost two years that I'd, uh, that I'd fought for over a full, full round. It was a 13 month layoff before I had my fight in Calgary and that was a yep. 10 minute fight where I landed that liver kick knockout. You know, and then it was another four months or so before I had this fight. So it was a long time getting serious ring time. So that's something that you you uh you can say isn't a factor, but it one hundred percent is. You know, you gotta be in there, you gotta stay comfortable. So, you know, if I get another one it's better, you know, as long as I'm again healthy, not being forever from hell. Yeah, that's that's best of luck with that, uh, Devin. You know, very likable guy, very tough guy. Well, one more question before I let you go. Uh, I'm following your social media account, and uh, you know, we see you don't you don't have a uh, you have a very interesting pet, uh, a, a pig named Phoebe. <laughs> Tell me about that. How you got how how it came to you, and you know what it's like to own a pet pig. Yeah, you know, it's uh, ever since I was a teenager, I wanted a pet pig. <laughs> um, and not to not to go back to the negative yet again because I keep kind of getting there. But the whole reason that it ended up happening was um, me and my wife had always said because I wanted one so long that once my my uh, pet dog Ava passed away, who was 12 at the time, um, once she passed away, that I could get a pet pig. And she seemed perfect health, um, but two weeks, uh, a little under two weeks before I fought in Calgary, I came my dog Ava being dead in our house um so that night I went out and buried her um and then the next morning you know I have to get back to the grind back in strength and conditioning which was like the hardest session I've ever done 
but right after um, she passed away, I started doing research, finding the most uh, credible place with uh, with certified miniature um, miniature pot belly pigs, and sure enough, the like three days after I came home from Calgary, she came in from Florida, and the, uh, <laughs> the rest is history. She's living her best friend. Uh, absolutely, that's awesome. That. Yeah, she's that's a, a great story. How do you take care of one? Like, what's what's is what goes into the day to day? Um, she's very similar to a dog, you know. I I would say that I don't I'm not a fan of cats, but they probably are a little bit more stubborn like cats. Like she's right. very food motivated, so if there's food out, like you can say come here or whatever, but she won't leave the food until it's 100 percent gone. Uh, but she loves, you know, you scratch her ear, her ribs, and she literally falls straight to her side and just goes like belly over and scratch her. <laughs> goes comatose um and uh she snuggles real good she's 104 degrees so she's warm it's like a little toaster under the blanket <laughs> she'll just stay on my chest and sleep um those are two main goals in my sleep either on top of me or literally like touching the fireplace which is a little scary um that and food so but yeah she's she's pretty awesome that's fantastic uh you do the pig is definitely uh, catch more on Devin Powell's Instagram. Uh, you know, did you see that uh, Calvin Cater and the episode he had with that little bird a few months ago? <laughs> Cal- yeah, Calvin's story. Yeah, that was amazing. That was that I, was unreal. I can't believe he lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, there's something uh, interesting about New England fighters and exotic pets. So <laughs> keep yeah, that in okay. mind. <laughs> hey. Uh, Devin, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the Nelson MMA podcast. Best of luck going forward in 2019. Uh, We hope to have you back again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much.